today we are going to go on to the next topic, which is indexing. Now, most of you probably know what an index is. Uh, every textbook has an index at the back, where if you want to look for uh, you know coverage of a particular topic, you search through that index and then find which page of the book has a material related to that topic. So, if you uh, look for map reduce in this book, for example, I am not sure it is there in the index, but let us say it is there. So, if you go into the index and look for map reduce, it will tell you page so and so of the book has a coverage of map reduce. Now, there are a few uh, points about this index, which are true for all indices. First of all, the index is usually much smaller than the actual data. So, the index at the back of a book may be 10, 15 pages for a book, which is uh, easily uh, you know 500 uh, to 1000 pages. So, the index is much smaller than the data. The second thing is that the index is organized in such a way uh, sorted in this case, such that given a word such as or a phrase such as map reduce, I can quickly find which page of the index has that. Searching through the book sequentially for the phrase map reduce would take a long time, but because the index is sorted. I can quickly uh, find the page which has that. Within the page, I can find the entry and thereby I can find out which page covers map reduce. So, that is the basic property of an index in a database too. The idea is you have a relation and you have a query. In this case, uh, it is not words usually, uh, but it is attributes. So, I may want to find where is the record for employee 1111. So, that is based on employee ID. So, if I have an index on employee ID, I do not have to search through every record of that relation to search for 1111. I can uh, use the index to find where that record is. Now, what do I mean by where is that record? Uh, as we saw yesterday, records are stored in blocks of a file. So, the index has to tell us which block of which file has that record. Once we know that, we can seek on that disk and retrieve that block of that file and then access the record. So, that is basically the job of an index. So, today we will start with basic concepts, which I have already uh, started discussing and then move on to a class of indices called ordered indices. Again, what I described is an example of an ordered index and we will spend a fair amount of time on B plus tree indices. Uh, the book also has coverage of uh, alternative indexing methods based on hashing. Uh, for lack of time, I am not going to cover it here. Um, not only is it lack of time, but also the fact is pretty much all databases support B plus tree indices. Several databases also support hash based indexing, but uh, the general experience has been B plus tree indices work uh, just as well as hash indices and give some extra benefits. So, most people use B plus tree indices. So, first of all, uh, some terminology. When I want to uh, create an index, first of all, the index should have a key. It is called a search key. So, I am going to store records in the uh, relation and each record has an in associated key value. So, I am going to insert an entry in the index for that record. So, what is the index entry uh, in the index file going to have? It will have a search key value and a pointer to the record. What do we mean by pointer? In uh, C or uh, C++ Java, you are used to pointers, which are uh, in memory uh, references. That is, they are the address of a memory location. Here, a pointer is not a memory location, because the data will, uh, the, the index entry should exist, even if the database system is not currently running. And the data is actually persistent on disk. So, by a pointer here, we mean a pointer to a disk location. What is a pointer to a disk location? Um, at one level, you can think of a pointer as a you know block address in the disk to which you can directly go. But more realistically, uh, it is usually a file identifier and a block identifier within that file. And then you actually have to do a little bit more work to traverse the file system data structures to find exactly which block of disk has that particular record. So, uh, index entry is a search key and a record ID or a record pointer. As I already said, there are ordered indices and then there are hash indices. Ordered indices keep the index entries sorted. 
So, now uh, there are uh, a few types of indices uh, which I mentioned. Now, if uh, your goal is to find records which exactly match a value, there are uh, you know these two types work. If your goal is to find all records in a particular range, so supposing I want to say uh, I want to find all uh, employees with employee ID between 300 and 1000. This kind of operation uh, is supported very well by an ordered index such as a B plus tree, whereas uh, indices such as hash indices do not support a query which asks for everything within a range. If you say give me the employee with ID 432, it will find it. But if you ask for everything between 300 and 1000, you can still find it, but it is going to be very inefficient. You have to look up 300, 301, 302 and so forth. And with strings, you cannot even do that. With integers, you can. Okay, so, uh, those are the uh, access types. Now, given a particular access type, there is a question of how much time does the index take to return records uh, satisfying the specified conditions. Now, what do we mean by time? Uh, you could measure the time in terms of uh, you know microseconds or milliseconds, uh, but that depends on the specific implementation. So, at our uh, abstract level, we are going to look at the complexity. So, we are going to say it takes logarithmic time or logarithmic time to the base 2, logarithmic time to the base 100 or some other such large value and so forth. That is the kind of analysis we will use for how much time does an index take or we will say it takes linear time logarithmic linear in what? In the number of records in that particular uh, relation which is indexed. So, uh, if you have a million records and the index takes time which is log to the base 2, uh, log to the base 2 of 1000 is 10. So, log to the base 2 of a million is 20. So, it may take 20 accesses. And uh, what do I mean by access? Again, most of the time an index is on disk. So, an access on disk would mean a random access to some block of disk and if the index is on a hard disk, if I take 20 accesses, each one takes 10 milliseconds on average, I can say that to access a record uh, through the index, I will take 10 times 20 or 200 milliseconds, which by database standards is quite low. So, 20 accesses to get to a record is actually very poor uh, for a database index. In fact, you can do much better. A good index can let you access even for a file with hundreds of millions of records, it can let you get to that uh, record in about 4 or 5 accesses instead of 20. And 4 or 5 times 10 milliseconds is 40, 50 milliseconds, which is much better than 200. Okay, so, that was access time. Another metric is uh, the insertion time. Given a new record, how long does it take to push it into that index? Similarly, deletion time. And finally, the space overhead of that index. Uh, so, how much extra bytes does it take to uh, store some uh, to index a particular relation? Now, I am going to focus on B plus tree indices, uh, but I should mention that uh, there are a few other uh, types of accesses which. Uh, cannot be effectively handled even by a B plus tree index. For example, if I give a point and say give me all, uh, let us say that the records are uh, locations of shops or locations of people, locations in terms of uh, let us say the latitude and longitude. These are often uh, used these days because your GPS systems can tell you your position in terms of latitude and longitude. So, uh, if you have stored the locations of various things in a database and my query is of the following form. I say here is a point, find me all people within a radius of uh, 100 meters of this point. Now, this kind of a query which looks up a two dimensional space, here is another kind of query. I will say here is a two dimensional latitude longitude space. Now, find me everything which is inside this box. The box is defined by two uh, latitudes and uh, two longitudes. So, that defines the four sides of a box and I say return everything inside that box. These kinds of queries which work on two dimensional data cannot actually be handled that efficiently by a B plus tree index. So, there is another class of indices called spatial indices 
which I am not covering here, uh, which handle such accesses. A very popular index can actually handle uh, spatial data. Uh, so, if you are interested in that, you can go read those up. Uh, we have a little bit of coverage of spatial indexing in one of the later chapters of the book, uh, although I am not going to cover it here. So, our focus is on B plus tree indices and it is on two types of accesses. One is a point access. Here is a um, key value, find the corresponding record or records. Why records? Because there may be duplicates. If I index, let us say on, uh, if I index an instructor relation on department name, then there are certainly duplicates. There are many instructors per department. So, if I say find instructors in the department uh, equal to computer science, I will get many results over there. That is a point query still. A point query may return multiple results. A range query, as I, as I said earlier, gives a range of values. Using this instructor example, I may say, uh, give me all instructors whose salary falls in the range uh, 50,000 to 80,000. If I had an index on salary, then it is a range query on that. Now, some more terminology. Uh, we are uh, focusing on ordered indices. Uh, there is a notion of uh, primary index, uh, which is actually a, the terminology is unfortunately a little confusing. Uh, a lot of people uh, think of a primary index as an index on a, on a primary key. In fact, it need not be. A primary index is one where the search key of the index is ordered in exactly the same order as the actual data of the relation. So, uh, if I store the instructor relation sorted by employee ID and the index is on employee ID and it is sorted again on employee ID. Then this index on employee ID is a primary index. It is also known as a clustered index. Why clustered? Because if I give a particular employee ID or a range of employee IDs, these records are going to be consecutive in the file. So, the set of answers to a query here will be consecutive or clustered in the file. So, it is called a clustered index. In contrast, a secondary index is one where the sort order of the actual data is different from the sort order of the indexing uh, search key. So, let us say I have the same uh, index on employee uh, instructor ID, but the instructor relation is not stored sorted. It is uh, in whatever order I insert records, it is stored in the relation and it is not sorted on employee ID. Then what I can uh, say is that if I um, search for consecutive employee IDs, they may be anywhere in the in, uh, in, sorry instructor IDs. If I look for consecutive instructor IDs, they may be anywhere in the instructor file. They need not be con at consecutive locations. Similarly, if I build an index on department name on an employee relation, where the employee relation is not sorted on department, but it is sorted on employee ID. Now, given a particular department, the employees of that department are going to be scattered all over the relation. They are not together. So, now in this employee relation, which is sorted on employee ID, an index which is on department would be a secondary index. Secondary indices are also called non-clustering indices because the records which satisfy a particular query, department equal to computer science, are going to be scattered across the file. So, um, an index sequential file is an ordered sequential file with a primary index. A little more terminology, there is a notion of a dense index, which basically has an index record for every search key value in the file. So, here is an example of a dense index. Um, I have this relation, uh, which in this case is actually sorted on uh, ID, the instructor relation. And the index is simply a file containing uh, employee ID and pointer to the record pairs. Now, this file is smaller than the employee file. So, it may be faster to search through this than through this one. Um, but as we will see, uh, there are more interesting cases coming up. This one is very straightforward. Now, um, here is uh, another uh, situation 
where a dense index does not actually have a pointer to every record. So, a dense index is one which has a uh, entry, a pointer for each search key value, not necessarily for each record. So, the difference is illustrated here. Uh, here, the uh, relation is sorted on department name and I have a dense index on department name. Now, when I have the biology department, I have a pointer to the first record. I do not need to store pointers to consecutive records of biology, because they will all be in the same place. Well, here there is only one biology record. So, let us look at computer science. The entry for computer science stores a pointer to the very first record for computer science. The next two records are also computer science, but there is no index entry for those, because we know the file is sorted on department. We know those records will be consecutive. So, there is no need to store one entry per value here. So, a dense index is still has one entry per search key value. In contrast, a sparse index contains index records for only a few of the search key values. Now, such an index may appear to be useless, but it is actually very useful as long as the index is on the same order as the underlying data. So, coming back to our same example, uh, where we had uh, instructor, but this time uh, the index is on instructor ID. But the key trick is, <coughs> instead of storing an entry for every instructor ID, we are only storing entries for three out of the many instructor IDs. So, what is the use of this particular index? The use is, supposing I am searching for 1 2 1 2 1. I go through this file, I say 1 2 1 2 1 is greater than the first one, but it is less than the second one. So, since it is um, greater than or equal to the first one, but less than the second, I will follow the first pointer. Now, this is not the record for 1 2 1 2 1, but I can search down in the file consecutively till I find that record or I hit the uh, record which is greater than that. So, in this case 1 2 1 2 1 exists and I find the record. If I search for 1 2 1 2 2, I will find 1 2 1 2 1 that is smaller, then I find 1 5 1 5 1 which is bigger than 1 2 1 2 2. So, at this point I say uh, that is it, the record is not there in the file and I will return failure. So, what is the point of doing this? The point is that the number of records I have to search is now one third of the total number of records, when I have three entries here. Obviously, three is insufficient for a very large file, but if I have a thousand entries here, I will need to search only one thousandth of the relation instead of the whole relation. So, clearly the benefit is enormous. Uh, so, uh, to continue this, if I search for let us say 33333, it is larger than this and less than this. So, I will come in here and then search down till I find the record or I fail. Okay. So, that was a very simple way to search. Now, the uh, idea of a sparse index is very important, um, because first of all, uh, the amount of space it takes is less than a dense index. And this becomes very, very important uh, when the indices are large. And uh, here is an example and I am going to see how to show you how to build multi level indices using sparse indices next, where they are critical. But first of all, here is an example of how a sparse index is usually built, even with one level. So, I have data and the data is sorted on some attribute and I can only build a sparse index on that attribute, because it is sorted. So, the data is sorted and the data is divided into blocks as we saw yesterday. So, I am going to have an entry for the very first record of the first block, then I am going to have an entry for the very first record of the second block and so forth. So, what is this uh, going to do? The number of entries here is equal to the number of blocks. Each block typically would hold many records. Uh, a rule of the thumb is uh, you know a medium sized record in a relation may be 100, 200 bytes. There are a few much larger records, but this is typical. And a page is typically maybe 16 kilobytes. 
So, in 16 kilobytes, if you divide by 200, uh, how many records are there in a page? Uh, you have about 40 records in a page. Therefore, um, the number of entries here is 1 40th of this, plus an index entry is much smaller than the actual record. So, the index size would be typically less than 1 percent of the relation size. Okay. So, that was a sparse index with one level, but if you have a really large relation, even a sparse index with one level, that index may become very big. So, if I have a gigabyte worth of data, uh, then the number of entries here may be gigabyte, uh, sorry, uh, billion records. If you have a billion records, the number of entries is a billion divided by 40, let us say, which is still a lot of million. Okay, that is uh, 25 uh, million records, uh, entries in the index, that is very large. And searching uh, through these 25 million entries itself will take a long time. So, the trick is I will build multiple levels of indices. So, it is very easy to understand if I have a picture here. This is the actual data. The first level index has one entry per block here. This first level index itself is very big, so its entries are divided into blocks. Now, remember that the entries here are sorted also. The data is sorted, the entries are sorted all on the search key. Now, I build one more outer index, which has one entry per block of the inner index. So, if this index has 25 uh, million entries, the next level index has one fortieth of that. Okay, so, that is um, what does that come to about 800,000 entries instead of 25 million. And 800,000 may still be large, so then I can have one more, which will be, uh, let us say, uh, if you divide by 40 again, uh, it becomes 20,000 and so on. You may build a few levels of indices. So, multi level index will have four or five levels, and in, within four or five levels, you can index a huge amount of data. That is the key insight for indexing in a database, that you have multiple levels and each level consists of a number of entries, which are divided into blocks. And the next level indexes a, has one entry per block below. So, such indices have been in use for a long time uh, and uh, they work very well. They have been around for easily uh, 50, 45, 50 years. Now, roughly about 40 years ago, uh, people realize that there is a drawback of a basic multi level index like this. And the drawback is how do you keep the index up to date as you insert and delete data. So, supposing I uh, insert a number of records here in this level and the thing has to be kept sorted. So, I have to insert it in this block here. Now, this block may become too big and I have to split it into two blocks. Then I have to add an entry here. Now, adding an entry here may require moving all the data below, which is rather tedious. So, then people said, uh, you know, let us take this idea. If this becomes too big, I will split it into and add an entry here. If this becomes too big, I will split it into and add an entry here. And this key insight that I can maintain this by splitting nodes and then propagating the split up became the core of this data structure called the B plus tree. So, we are going to see what the B plus tree is shortly. But before that, um, let me also show you an example of a secondary index. Now, here is an index on salary. It is a secondary index, because the relation is sorted on employee ID, not on salary. So, the secondary index has one entry per salary value. And here, if I have two people with the same salary of 80,000, who are these guys? Singh and Kim both have a salary of 80,000. So, I am going to have two pointers, one to Singh and one to Kim over here. So, that is a set of values. For each value, I am going to have a set of pointers to the records. So, that is a secondary index. So, uh, coming back, um, as I said, if I have to keep the file sorted and I have to keep the um, index up to date while I am inserting or deleting data. Uh, the standard solution in 45 uh, years back would be 
uh, to rebuild the index periodically. Um, so, the in index goes slightly out of order, you have some extra entries and then you rebuild it. Now, rebuilding turned out to be very expensive um, as data grew larger. So, the B plus three indices were introduced as a way to avoid rebuilding a whole index, but instead to incrementally update the index as data is inserted or deleted. So, what a B plus three does is it reorganizes itself with small local changes. So, the changes affect a small part of the index. It, no insertion or deletion requires you to go and change the whole index. So, each update can be done fairly fast. But over time, of course, the whole index will change if you have a very large number of inserts and deletes. So, as a result of reorganizing, uh, performance will not degrade. In index sequential files, which were the predecessor, uh, IBM uh, had in its mainframes had index sequential files. So, they used a different structure where you created overflow blocks and there are a variety of tricks that they used, but all of those over a period of time as you inserted more and more data, the index became progressively inefficient and had to be rebuilt. Whereas, B plus trees rebuild themselves incrementally instead of one big bang rebuild once in a while. So, the there is a small overhead due to B plus trees, which is first insertion and deletion take some more time and more importantly, there is a space overhead of a B plus tree index, but that is viewed as perfectly acceptable given the benefits which it gives. So, that is why they have become universally used. So, here is an example of a B plus tree index. Now, so far when I showed you a sparse index, it was kind of turned around. The data is here and then level 1, level 2, level 3 left to right or right to left depending on how you view it. In contrast, when I show a B plus tree, it is essentially the same thing, but I am going to turn it around. So, I have data at one level, first level of the index above, next level above that and so on until I hit the root of the index. So, if you look at it this way, an index is clearly a tree. Okay. If you looked at it the other way, it is still the same thing, but it is not obvious that it is a tree data structure. When you turn it around, it is obvious that it is a tree data structure. So, that is why it is a B plus tree. So, what is the index itself? These are the entries of the index, the levels of the index. Down here is the actual data. Now, this font may be too small for you to read from the display, uh, but you can see it in the book uh, later on. So, what I will uh, note is that this particular file is sorted on employee ID, whereas the index is on the name of the uh, instructor rather. It started on instructor ID, the index is on name. So, I need to have one entry, uh, one pointer for each record in this index. And now, you will notice that for each record, there is an incoming pointer from the leaf level of the index. So, if I search for a name, uh, I will uh, find an entry in here uh, till I find that name. Uh, there seems to be a slight uh, bug in this slide. Uh, this pointer here should actually have come from here. It should have been shifted one left. Okay. So, coming back, uh, let me repeat what that error was. There is a pointer here uh, going down and then pointing to crick. That pointer should have come from the left of the word crick here, not from the right hand side. That was shifted right by error. Okay. So, now what is this index leaf doing? It has one entry per name over here. Um, if there were multiple people with the same name, uh, we will see how to deal with it later on. For the moment, let us assume that there are no duplicates at this level. And uh, so, what we will we'll have is for each entry here, uh, for brand, to the left of it is a pointer, which points to the record for Brandt. Similarly, for Califieri, to the left of it here is a pointer, which points to the record with Califieri. And similarly, for Crick, to the left of it, this should have shifted left, there is a pointer to the record with Crick. And so on, for each uh, name, which is at the leaf level. So, for every name, there is an entry in the leaf level and a pointer to the record. The pointer in this case is to the left of the record. Now, the rightmost entry of the leaf 
has a pointer to the next leaf, which lets us navigate by starting from some leaf and then going right, right, right till I hit the uh, last leaf which I am interested in. So, that allows navigation at the leaf level. Note also that every name is here and the names are sorted. Although the relation is sorted on employee ID, not on name, the leaf level of this index is sorted on name. So, that is clear what the leaf should contain. Now, one level up, you will notice the structure looks a little bit different. At this level, um, there are two names in this particular case, but three pointers. Now, here the meaning is as follows. Here is a name Einstein. The pointer to its left basically says, every name which is less than Einstein is in the subtree which is pointed to on this side. Here the subtree is just a single node, but going up to the root of the tree, it is a little more clear. So, here is Mozart and the left side pointer from Mozart says that every name in this index which is less than Mozart will be in this subtree pointed to here. And you can easily verify that. If you see here, uh, from Brandt up to Kim is in this subtree pointed to here and Mozart onwards are in the other side. So, everything less than Mozart is in this subtree. At this level, this is the very last pointer. So, this level also says one more thing. It says everything which is greater than Mozart is on the right side over here pointed to by this pointer and that is also easy to verify. You have Mozart, Singh, Srinivas and Wu all greater than or equal to Mozart is on this side. Now, coming down back to this node, um, everything less than Einstein was on the left. What is over here in this subtree? This contains all records which are greater than or equal to Einstein, but less than gold. So, each pointer here contains values which are greater than or equal to the value to its left and less than the value to the right. So, here Einstein and El Said are down here. Um, Whereas, gold itself is in a tree which is to the right of gold. So, everything above gold goes here. Well, let us be a bit careful. It is not everything above gold. It is everything which was less than Mozart because we came into this tree only with values which are less than Mozart. And then on this side is everything which is greater than gold, but greater than or equal to gold, but less than Mozart is in this subtree. That is the idea here. Okay, so, that is how this data structure, uh, that is a property of the data structure. Now, how do you build this data structure? We are going to discuss in a little bit. But before we see how to build, the first question is, how do you search for a value in this data structure? And the answer should be very clear. If I search down here for, let us say, gold, I will start at the root. I will say Mozart. Is gold less than Mozart? Yes, it is less. Therefore, I will go on the left side and come to this node. Now, I repeat it here and I search in here for a value uh, which is less than gold, uh, less than or equal to gold and a value which is greater than gold. In this case, there is a value which is less than or equal to gold, which is this one. There is nothing greater. So, it is the last one here. So, I will follow this pointer and come down to this leaf and here I find gold and I am done. What if I search for let us say CADs? If I search for CADs, I will find it is less than Mozart, K is less than M. Come here, CADs is greater than gold and gold is the last entry. So, again I will follow the same pointer and land up here. What if I search for El Said? This is slightly different. El Said is less than Mozart, I will come here. El Said is greater than Einstein, but less than gold. Since it is less than gold, but greater than or equal to Einstein, I will follow this pointer and here in this node I find El Said. So, this is basically how I search down. If I search for a value which is not present, what will happen? I will land up at a leaf and then I will see that the value is not there in the leaf and say sorry, the value is not there in the index. So, that is basically how I search in a B plus tree index. Now, here are a few properties of B plus tree indices. First of all, um, as you saw in that figure, the index has multiple levels and 
each pointer is from one level to the next level and all the leaves of the index are at one level, the bottommost level. In other words, all paths from the root to the leaf are exactly the same length. Now, if you have a binary tree, uh, binary search tree, you will know that the different paths to the different leaves may have a different depth from the root. So, the path lengths are different, it varies. And in extreme cases, a binary search tree may be very skewed. So, searching for some keys may take a very long time. B plus trees make sure that does not happen. They make sure that the tree is balanced. There are many other balanced tree structures, uh, which are well known, uh, which uh, are covered in a data structures course. Um, but a B plus tree is one such balanced tree. And in fact, it is balanced in the sense that every leaf is at, is at exactly the same depth from the root. Furthermore, a B plus tree must satisfy this following property. Every node other than the root of the leaf must have between ceiling of n by 2 and n children. What is n? We are assuming that uh, the uh, key values are fixed length and the assumption is I can pack at most um, n minus 1 key values and n pointers in each of the internal node. n is this number. It is defined based on the size of the pointer, uh, size of the key. So, if the keys are names which are 20 characters plus a pointer which is uh, 8 bytes, then um, this adds up to 28 bytes and if I have a 16 kilobyte page, I can calculate how many entries and pointers I can have if I fill that page. That is the value of n. Okay. A page will have uh, n pointers, an internal node that is, will have n pointers and n minus 1 key values. And the property of the tree is that an internal node may not be packed full. There may be spaces in it. We saw that in this structure. Um, in fact, both of these internal nodes, all three internal nodes have some wasted space here. They have space for a key and space for pointers, which are currently unused. If you look at the leaf level, this leaf is packed full. It has space for three uh, keys and all three are occupied. This leaf is not, nor is this or this. So, in fact, this is a property which is fine for a B plus tree that a particular node may not be packed full, but it must be packed to at least half. In fact, ceiling of n by 2 is the minimum number of pointers which will be there in an internal node. Now, why is this important? Uh, if this minimum number is 2, then the height of the tree may be very large, it may be a very tall tree, requiring a lot of disk accesses to get to the root of the tree, because each node of that tree may be on a different disk page potentially. So, the idea is that n should be large. So, n by 2 is also large. So, if n is let us say 200, n by 2 would be 100. So, each node of the tree has at least 100 children. So, now if I have a tree with three levels, how many uh, leaves does it have? The root has uh, maybe uh, you know up to 100, actually root does not quite satisfy this, um, but on average actually the root will also have a lot of children. So, let us for purpose of simplicity assume the root has 100 children and the next level also has 100 children. So, each of the 100 children of the root has 100 children. So, 100 into 100, 10,000. With three levels of the tree, I have 10,000 leaves. The leaf level, one level and one more level, which is the root. So, I have 10,000 leaves, each of which itself may have 100 pointers. So, let us say 10,000 into 100 is 1 million. So, 1 million record entries can be stuck into a B plus tree with just three levels. So, as you can see, the B plus tree is going to be very short. So, because it is short, the number of times you have to go from one node to another is much less than in a binary search tree. This is an important property, because node access is very slow with a disk. Now, a leaf itself also has a minimum occupancy property and it is a little slightly different for a leaf, because a leaf um, basically can have up up to n minus 1 values, one last pointer is reserved anyway to go to the next leaf. So, this is the maximum. The minimum number of values it can have 
correspondingly is ceiling of n minus 1 by 2. That is a minimum occupancy for a leaf. Special cases, if the root is not a leaf, it has at least two children. Um, th this can happen, uh, we will see why later on. Uh, and if a root is a leaf, it can even have less. If a tree is essentially empty, just the very first record is added, then the root is also a leaf, it will have just one entry. Okay, so, we saw a picture of a B plus tree, but this is the uh, formal structure of a node. Each node has pointers P 1, P 2 up to P n. Each node has key values K 1, K 2 up to K n minus 1. And this is identical whether it is a root uh, intermediate node or leaf. All nodes have the same basic structure. The way the pointers are used is a little bit different. For an internal node, the pointers are pointers to other B plus tree nodes, which are below them. For leaf nodes, the pointers are record pointers. The search keys inside a node are ordered as k 1 less than k 2 up to k n minus 1 up to here. We will uh, assume here again no duplicates. A leaf itself, uh, as I said, each pointer is a pointer to a record. Uh, this is uh, an, a blown up leaf node where Brandt, Califieri and Crick all point to the corresponding records. And the last point is a pointer to the next leaf. So, we looked at sparse indices. If you look at what a B plus tree is, if you just look at all the nodes at a particular level, that level actually forms a sparse index on the level underneath. And so, each level is a sparse index on the level below. So, a B plus tree is an example of a multi level sparse index. So, now here is another example of a B plus tree. Uh, which is actually for the same data as before, but now supposing the node size is bigger. By the way, in all our examples, the node sizes are fairly small. We have maybe four children or six children in this case at, at most. In reality, uh, nodes are much bigger because they correspond to disk nodes. 16 kilobytes is common. In fact, uh, sometimes even bigger. So, the number of children, as I said, is usually much larger, 100 or so. Obviously, we cannot draw 100 children in a page of a book. Therefore, we use very small fan out of 4 to 6 for examples, but it is actually much bigger. This is called the fan out by the way. The number of children of a node is called the fan out of the node. So, here is an example with n equal to 6. With n equal to 6, there are 6 pointers. Therefore, um, each leaf node must have between ceiling n minus 1 by 2 and n minus 1, which is in other words between 3 and 5 uh, values in every leaf node. And every internal node must have between 3 and 6 children. Ceiling of 6 by 2 is 3 and maximum is 3. So, between 3 and 6 children. So, notice something here. This is an index on the same set of names, but because my nodes are now wider, instead of 4 children, I have 6 children, the tree actually got shorter from 3 levels, it is now down to 2 levels. So, the wider a node is, the shorter the tree. 